Craig, uh, getting back to Julian now, uh, your estimation, where is he? You know him better than anybody. You've, you've been out there passionately for him. Uh, that, that speech you gave at St. Pancras Church in December of 2019 is emblematic of, of the kind of powerful eloquence that you have uh, spewed out there in, in support of Assange. You've been in that embassy more times than anybody probably with him. And you probably have visited him in uh, Belmars, but we don't, won't get into that. But what have you heard or what have you seen, uh, his disposition right now? And how is he psychologically? I mean, we heard from, uh, John and Gabriel, uh, but Gabriel hadn't seen him in six months. So, uh, can you give us any kind of update on how he might be feeling mentally and physically? Yeah, well, I have been visiting Julian in Belmarsh, but I've been uh, put under an obligation not to speak about it because <laughs> that was the basis on which I was allowed in. Julian is a strong person. Let, let me say that. You know, there are many people who would have completely physically and mentally collapsed under the, the terrible way he's been treated, the solitary confinement, the inadequate medical care, the enormous stress and pressure. Um, but Julian is a strong-willed, strong-minded person and uh, a person of remarkable intellect and remarkable moral authority, uh, able to summon remarkable moral force. And I'm confident that once we get Julian out, we will have the old Julian back again, that he hasn't been lost or destroyed by the experience. Right. Well, where is it legally right now for uh, for people that don't know? Because it's hard to get information. Uh, I know there's some back channel stuff out there in the air about some kind of deal. Uh, concretely, can you tell us where it really stands or are we all kind of in the dark here? Yeah, I think um, you know, there have been noises made, been noises made by the United States ambassador to Australia saying that, you know, a plea deal is possible and that's what the Australian government have been uh, pushing for as a way to solve it. But I'm not, <laughs> what I can tell you is that there have been no official approaches from the American government indicating any willingness to soften or ameliorate their position. Uh, you know, the position of the Biden administration still seems to be that they wish to persecute and destroy Julian and lock him up for life for publishing the truth about war crimes. <laughs> and for publishing, we should never forget, Julian is the publisher. Julian is not the whistleblower. The whistleblower was Chelsea Manning. Julian is just a publisher, just as the Guardian and the New York Times and the Washington Post were publishers of the same information. So there just is no evidence of any sincerity on behalf of the United States government in these noises off we've been hearing. It seems to be that to placate public opinion in Australia, where you know public opinion is over 80% in favour of dropping the charges and allowing Julian to go home to his native country, that in order to placate public opinion in Australia, the American ambassador has made comments about, oh, well, a plea deal might be possible, but this is just... Rubbish. You know, this is just talk in the air. There's been no kind of approach or indication from the Justice Department of anything like that at all. It's just not true. It's a false statement they've been putting out to try to placate public opinion in Australia. I mean, Craig, it, it really is not a propitious time for the uh, Biden administration. He's so far down in the polls for him to, at this point, support the extradition of Assange. Does he really want this on his plate? It's extraordinary to me. I mean, I'm not an American anyway, so in a sense it's no skin off my nose, and I'm certainly not a a supporter of Donald Trump. But to somebody who's not an American, in fact, to the entire rest of the world, it looks quite extraordinary that the United States is trying to lock up its chief of political opponent, the chief political opponent of the current administration, the guy who is likely to be the opposition candidate and the guy who's quite likely to win the presidential election, uh, the way they're trying to stop him winning the presidential election isn't by beating him in an election, it's by locking him up. And that's what, it's not what democracies do, that's what other countries 
do. It's what dictators well, Imran do. Imran Khan. Uh, it's, it's the same situation as Imran Khan. Well, right. precisely, the United States are behind what's happening to Imran Khan. And it's, of course, it's exactly what the United States is doing. It's exactly what it accuses Russia of doing with Navalny. Um, so, you know, this looks very, very strange. And if at the same time you're trying to lock up your main political opponent so you don't have to fight him in a democratic election, and you're trying to lock up the most famous publisher in the world simultaneously for publishing stuff which is true, that's a terrible look. I mean, that's absolutely astonishing. I don't know whether Joe Biden's trying to go down as running the most despotic government in Western history, but that's certainly what we're looking at. Right.